Last time we had a look at um, bisection and we were looking at using bisection to find roots of a function where f of x is equal to zero and we were starting with a point which was uh, uh, where we had one point where the function was negative, one function point where the function was positive, gave a positive value, and we knew that in between that positive and negative value, provided the function was continuous, at some point it would go through the axis, and we were uh, using some simple logic to search for that point, and um, today we're going to apply the same logic, and what we're going to be looking at doing is uh, finding maxima. So this is bisection part two and using it as a numerical method to find maxima. So if we have um, some sort of function of x, so we have x along here, and we'll have some function of x on the vertical axis, then um, let's sketch some sort of function which is going to have a maximum. So let's see something like this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is choose some starting points and so what we have is a starting point on the left and a starting point on the right and call those x0 and x2 and then in the middle between them we are going to have a um, we're going to have uh, some sort of uh, actually what, what I'm going to do is move x2 a little bit we're going to have x2 let's say um, just over here this is going to be our x2 value, so x2 is there, and let's see, let's take a point roughly sort of halfway in between now, the gaps don't have to be uh, perfect for this, but um, I reckon if we start uh, about here, then we can have an x1 value here and so um, we have got three points here so in this method what we do is we uh, have um, we choose x0, x1, and x2, so that f of x1 is greater than f of x0, and f of x1 is greater than f of x2. So if we have some sort of continuous line going from x uh, f of x, uh, then if the function has a maximum value in between two lower values or a higher value in between two lower values, then we know there must be a maximum somewhere in between x0 and x2. So if we find this, then we know must be a maximum. between f of x0 and f of x2. Now, what we do uh, in this method is we uh, start, uh, we choose, or we don't choose, we go halfway in between x1 and x2 and uh, x0 and x1 and we get some now I'm doing this approximately 
we get some other values x3 and x4. So we choose x3, or we calculate x3, which is going to be x1 plus x0 divided by 2. It's the average between. And x4 is uh, x1 uh, plus x2 divided by 2. And so um, now we have three different possibilities. Possibilities. Okay. So the first possibility, or the three possibilities, uh, well, let's say the first possibility here yeah, is that x1 is still the highest. Or rather, let's say f of x1 is still the highest. So f of x1 is still highest, and it's greater than f of x3 and f of x4, which is what we have above. And in that situation, what we can do is we can leave x1 can stay the same, uh, but we can say that x0 now is equal to x3 and x2 is equal to x4. And what this means is that we know now, because uh, the point here for x3 and x4, well, the, the, the values of f of x3 and f4, they're both lower than the value of f of x1, then we know now that the maximum is in between here and here. And what we can do is um, effectively now this is uh, the new value of x0. x1 keeps the same value and this is a new value for x2. Right. Now, the next step is uh, to repeat the process. So uh, I'm going to go for a different color. I'm going to try red now. So what we're going to do again is have some points in between. And this is going to be our new, well, these are going to be our new values for x4 and x3. So x3 and x4 are sort of test points. And now we have sort of values here for x3, x1, and x4. Now, um, the x3, x1 and x4 look about the same height, but just so that we get a different... A possibility, let's say here, now when we make a note, let's say that we've got the possibility now too that f of x uh, 4 is now bigger than f of x 1 and it's also bigger than f of x 3. Okay, so now let's use that red color again. We've narrowed down the range where the maximum could be. We know now that x, if the x4 is the highest value, that uh, by the same sort of logic, that this must be uh, these are new sort of values for. Uh, x1 and what we want to do let's change color again uh, we'll change to um, black and so now 
we want to uh, say that, OK, the left-hand limit, x0, is there. And this is going to be the new value of x1. And actually, this will stay as x2 over here. So if we just make a note of what the conditions are, now we say that um, x0 uh, is equal to where x1 used to be. And x1 uh, now is equal to where x4 was. And in fact, x2 just stays the same. OK, so um, I guess you can uh, see what's going to happen next. We are going to, again, look sort of halfway in between and get some new values here for um, x3 and x4. Sorry, it's getting a little bit bunched up in that diagram. And uh, so now we need to look at this x3 value, this x1 value, and this x4 value. And um, I think now we can say we've got our third possibility, where f of x3 now is greater than f of x1 and f of x4. Um, so in this case, on the left-hand side, um, x0 just stays the same. But um, the, the new value for x2 is going to be equal to uh, the old value of x1. And x1 is now going to equal x3. And so from doing that, um, uh, th those uh, calculations, what we see, uh, I'm gonna, let's see which color, let's try the yellow one. I'm not sure how well the yellow shows up, but let's try it. Um, we now know that the maximum is somewhere in that yellow box there. And we're going to go back to blue again to write. And so now we would say this is going to be x0, this is going to be x1, and this is going to be x2. Now, I'm not going to try and go any further or any more deeply into finding the maximum because there's not space um, to do that, and it's all squashed up enough anyway. But what we've gone through there is the three different possibilities of um, x1, x3, or x4, giving the highest value uh, uh, when put into a function. And... Um, so with that, the the idea with this sort of bisection method, as with, with the last bisection method, what we do is we keep searching with x3 and x4 values until... the gap between x0 and x2, x0 and x0, x0 and x2 is small enough. So we can keep using this method, and every uh, time we do it, the gap between x0 and x2 is it's going to be halved uh, if they're equally spaced. In fact, they don't need to be equally spaced for, for this method to work. Um, so, 
So, I mean, it's a nice um, automatic uh, method, or it's a nice method which can be programmed automatically. So, uh, as with uh, the last thing uh, we did, we can write a program to do this. And I'm going to write it as if I was using C with a sort of do while configuration, but you know, you use whatever language you prefer if you like to try this out. So the idea is we do the loop while the condition here is true. So in a program, the first thing that uh, you need to do is set x0, x1, and x2 values so that uh, f of x1 is greater than f of x0 and f of x2. So that's the first thing you need to do in the program. Now we'll have um, some sort of a do loop. And the first thing that we're going to um, do here is to say that um, x3 is equal to x0 plus x1 over 2 and x4 is x1 plus x2 over 2. So that gives us the uh, two midpoints to test. And once we've got those two midpoints, we can uh, start with the logic. So if now I'm going to again uh, just write down uh, a function. Uh, so I, I don't know how uh, you could program it. There's a number of different ways of doing this. But I'm just going to assume that we've got a function f which will um, give us the value of f of x. So if f of x1 is greater than f of x0, And now, and in C we write like that. And f of x1 is greater than f of x2. Ah! Rats! I've run out of space. Didn't realize how close to the edge I was. We'll, get, we'll just write it on the line below. And f of x1 is greater than f of x2. We know that x1 is the highest point. This is the condition we have here. And so if that's the case, what we can do is say, OK, x one's going to stay the same, so we don't need to worry about that. We can just say x0 equals x3 and x2 equals x4. And then uh, we can close that. But we need to worry about what the other possibilities might be else. If. Um, so now, because we know that uh, f of x1 is not greater than both of the other two. Ah, drat, I've made a mistake. Um, so uh, I'm just going to try and see if I can erase uh, the mistake. Uh, uh, no. Uh, let's see. Oh, dear. Disaster. Here we go. Yes, let's just do a little bit of removing stuff. Okay, so I, I got the logic wrong because, of course, we're not comparing f of x1 with f of x0 and f of x2. What we're doing is we're comparing um, let me get rid of, let's just erase all of this and make it, make it better.
Right. Okay. Try again. So, uh, to begin with, what we do is we look to see if f of x1 is greater than f of x3. And with two ampersands, f of x1 is greater than f of x4, because those are the values we've just tested. We should have set it up so that it's greater than x0 and x2. Sorry, I need to put in the x there as well. And then we need to close um, a bracket for that, and then another bracket for the whole of the uh, logic of the if statement there. Okay, right. Now, in that case, if x1 is the highest and x3 and x4 are lower, then we know that x0 can be x3 and x2 can be x4. And so we pull it in. And that is uh, condition 1, as I was saying before. Now, if x1 is not the highest point, then um, we know that either x3 or x4 is. So we could just write if f of x3 is greater than f of x4. Now, if that's true, we know that x3 is actually the highest point because x1 isn't the highest point, and either x1, x3, or x4 is. And in this condition, if x3 is the highest, well, x0 stays the same. x2 on the left-hand side is going to equal x1, and x1 itself is going to equal x3. Notice that it's important to change the value of x1 here after you've set x2 to the value of x1. Otherwise, you sort of delete or overwrite the value of x1 and lose it. So you need to, it's important to do this part here first. Okay? Now, we then uh, finish that a uh, little bit there and we can say else else we have x4 as the highest point and then what we do is we um, then if x4 is the highest point okay so if x3 is the highest point of course that's this condition here if it's x4 then it's this condition here uh, on the left so now uh, if x4 is highest then uh, x0 on the left hand side needs to move up to where x1 is and x1 itself needs to be equal to x4 and again it's really important to do uh, this part before we do x1 is equal to x4 oops I should have put in curly brackets here so else um, we do this these statements here. Okay, so that's quite a long if statement. The if statement um, starts here and goes all the way down here with different uh, bits of logic um, to cope with the different possibilities that either x1 or x3 or x4 uh, gives the highest value of, of the function. Now now that we've sort of changed all the x values, uh, we can uh, finish off our do loop just with closing the curly bracket and while, and we know that x2 should be bigger than x0, so we can just say while well, x2 minus x0 is greater than some small value. Now I don't know what small value is going to work. Uh, in your application it might be 0 0.1, it might be 0 0.001 or 1e minus 10 or something. You have to figure out uh, what value you want to put in there for the small value. So the do loop runs from here down to here. Okay, now um, in this way, that every time you go through the do loop, the gap between x0 and x2 will get smaller and smaller. But, of course, you, you need to have some condition to break out of a loop when, you, when you've got small enough uh, for your application. 
um, I want to finish quickly with a quick advantage and disadvantage. So an advantage is we can find a maximum of course you can use the same method to find a minimum but find a maximum without uh, knowing f primed of x. If you can't differentiate the function easily then you can use this method to find a maximum and if you turn the logic the other way round to look for a lowest point you could use it to look for a minimum. So a disadvantage Uh, similar to what we have with bisection, if we have a function here and it does something like this and we start with values of x0 and x1 and x2 here, then uh, we will either find this maximum or that maximum depending on how the function goes. So you can't just rely on this method blindly. It's good to um, sort of plot the function as well just to, to check to see how it looks. Okay, so um, that's uh, the end of the second um, uh, video about bisection. Um, one point here is uh, that uh, just to say why we do bisection and so the question might be um, why not a for loop? Because a for loop would be um, probably easier to program without all this uh, looking to see which is the highest point and, and then sort of organizing these. You just go through a, high, uh, a for loop and uh, find the highest point. And whilst that's the easiest uh, way to program, it's going to be a less efficient way for searching for the maximum because uh, if uh, you, you look through a for loop then you have to have some step size and if you want to find it really accurately then you need to have a really small gap between your points but then that means you would be maybe looking at thousands or millions of points before you found your maximum and if you had a larger step size then you could get to your middle more quickly or get to a maximum value more quickly but because you've got a bigger step size between the points then you, you wouldn't know so accurately where the maximum was you might want to run another for loop then and um, so this bisection method I think will probably turn out to be the most uh, efficient way or um, uh, about the most efficient way perhaps or one of the most efficient ways of, of finding a maximum. Now, if you do more calculations, say with uh, the newton raphson method, then you can you can be much more efficient to find a maximum or uh, a, a root uh, of a function much more rapidly. But then you need to know uh, the gradient, and so. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, end of uh, this video on uh, bisection.